Dente Rigamortis. I'm Review Cultist. And I'm Mikey, the E stands for Evil. And we're here to discuss those internet stories, most creepy and most pasta, and be critically silly doing it. Tonight we have the Fair Folk. So, at the time of this posting, I will be in Newfoundland. So, um, in preparation for that, I chose, uh, I went around looking for a Newfoundland based creepypasta. And what I found was The Fair Folk, which is by Knitwolf on creeppost.com as well as the Wiki page. Uh, you can also check out a reading of it by Stephanie Swan Quills on YouTube. Um, and so, yeah, this is a yeah, so the Newfoundland-based um, series, or a Newfoundland-based story about the fair folk, or the fairies, because, yeah, apparently that's a thing. Uh, and we'll get into that. So, with the rundown... Uh, our narrator is a student at Memorial University in St. John's, Newfoundland. The city isn't actually named, but info in and out of the story kind of confirms it. Mm-hmm. Um, when they start uh, an assignment involving getting tales and accounts about the fairy folklore of Newfoundland, because they are a folklore major and they love folklore, like they mm-hmm. want to, th- their passion is that. Yeah. Um, they go to their hometown, Cupid's. And after a number of interviews, turns to their uh, grandfather, who tells them a harrowing tale of how he went down a forbidden trail uh, and barely escaped the clutches of devilish fairies. He was told to have uh, breadcrumbs and, or he was told and had breadcrumbs and uh, to offer and to turn his jacket inside out to protect himself. Uh, by his mother, who warned him in the first place about going down the trail. But of course, as uh, any horror story character went down there anyways. Um, but luckily, he had the, the the proper protection to do so. A bit disturbed by like recounting the tale, because it was such a dark, traumatic kind of thing for him. Um, the grandfather heads, heads into bed, but not before warning um, our narrator against going ne- or trying to find that trail. At which point, our narrator does just that. Um, because they remember it from their childhood when they were picking berries. Um, and uh, they remember a trail that was always ignored or avoided, even though it was a shortcut to the, back to their house or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, they find it and are basically, within, within like a couple of moments of going into like the trail, at first it seems kind of like um, overgrown, and then eventually like when they go inside like farther in, it seems like it's actually been cut and stuff. Yeah, cleared. And, or cleared. And um, that's what basically when they're attacked by the king, by the uh, by these three fairy creatures: uh, the king of rot, the king of trees, and the king of bone. Um, and the king of rot is this humanoid mound of dirt, moss, and mold, rotting or s- smelling of rot and smelling and like worms and insects crawling in and out of it. The 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 king of trees is a um, basically an ent, mm-hmm. uh, a giant gnarled. Uh, Amalgamation of gnarled wooden uh, branches or, or gnarled branches and bark, uh, with mock with a mockery of human face on it, mm-hmm. um, and the and the king of bone is basically a skeletal moose made from antlers and a and a moose skull and mm-hmm. uh, sinews and stuff like that. So, really cool descriptions of these like monsters. Um, now, the question I have is, where did you get the king of? It's the mentioned story. in the story. The King of Rot, the King of Bone, and the King of Trees. Right. It's in the story, man. Are you sure? Yeah. I, I might even have that qu- part of the quote there. Here, hang on. Yeah, here it is. Because there's a section where it explains each creature, but and then and then down the down below that, like after the descriptions are all done, it mentions the King of Rot, the King of Bone, and I'm pretty sure it said the King of Trees. I have king of trees. Yeah, the king that the king of trees wanted to pull me apart. Right. Um, that the king of rot wanted to suffocate me in his stinking embrace, and that the king of bone wanted to gore me with each of its twisted antler limbs. Okay. Yeah. I, I just didn't get that. I went to the description to reread it, but didn't go to the fight scene. You didn't do the reading material. <laughs> <laughs> I read it. Uh huh. <laughs> I had to reread some sections. Okay. Um, I just wanted to make sure that yeah. 
that I wasn't just bullshitting. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, I don't do that all the time, do I? I don't do that enough time to merit that, do I? No, but I know that you've done extra research on this and you that's might true, have yeah. gotten yeah, I, from somewhere else. Yeah, that's true. Okay, anyways, uh, back, to the, back to the rundown. So, with no protection, um, like no, no breadcrumbs, no, no jacket because mm-hmm. it was warm out, <laughs> they, the chase seems dire and they are wounded on several occasions by the thing like wh- like whipped by the by the king of trees um slashed at by the by the king of of rot and i think gored at some point in the in the side by the uh, king of bone mm-hmm. um but it seems like they're playing with them not just that um uh, they're like like cuz otherwise this would be over very quickly yeah, yeah. <laughs> if they and um however despite them being so dire and like being wounded and so that the narrator does escape by inches um is found by locals just as they come out of the uh, out of like the the, the trail, mm-hmm. and uh, is hospitalized. Um, their wounds have stra- are strange. They uh, having things come out of it, like bone and fragments and pine needles and such. Um, and then when they pull off the uh, like the cast, eventually when it heals, which it does take a while, they pull off the cast and there's like bark and needles around the wound as well, around like where the part was healing. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, it seems fine. Um, yeah, because also her. Or, I think it's a her. It might it, right now. I'm, I've been trying to go with like uh, uh, a nebulous um, pronouns, but um, yeah, their limb, like their arm, is basically snapped or broken by the uh, by the king of trees, mm-hmm. uh, and that's what kind of what makes them like kind of fall over or faint uh, off at the end of the the trail. Mm-hmm. Um, however, yeah, yeah, so like yeah, like they have uh, bits and pieces of like bone and needles and so that coming out of their wounds. Um, that just keep coming out of the wounds. Like, yeah. you know, like the doctors can't seem to f- fully like figure it out. Um, mm-hmm. But it's actually like, and that's actually like in the folklore. Um, mm-hmm. But they eventually do. Her, their wounds do eventually recover and heal. Um, uh, and and with more than a bit, uh, more than a bit guilty about not heeding the grandfather's warnings, um, they are kind of just left there. They they eventually like get out of the hospital and stuff like that. Then we come to about a number a number of years later, um, and they have a bachelor's degree in folklore, and the events only made them more interested in folklore. Um, also, the fairy kings um, never left them really alone. They've always kind of been around, like in the shadows and some of that. Kind of like they always seem to hear like the the the, the laughter that they mm-hmm. uh, the the maniac the the, the, the uh, mocking laughter um, from like mm-hmm. woods and some of that, uh, and the wounds have never properly, like, there's always, like, an itch from up on the, about the wounds. Mm-hmm. So, um, and it's all because they, did, they didn't pay the proper offering um, that you're supposed to uh, to the fairy folk, or to the fae folk, or fair folk. Um, mm-hmm. So, they hope, that it, on top of, like, you know, writing a, no, writing, a, writing a novel, writing their thesis on all this stuff, including their own tale, they're writing this story to the internet um, in the hopes of telling the tale to others and make, have that be a proper, like, offering or, like, a, like almost like a warning or, like, cautionary tale to not, to, uh, to avoid the, the fair folk. Mm-hmm. And that's basically where the story ends, um, is it that. So, uh, I kind of dug in, I fell down a rabbit hole <laughs> doing some research on this story, but we'll get into that. Um, so I'm going to start off with a quote. So, my family comes from Cupid's, a rural, over 400-year-old community about a one-hour drive from the city I live in, which is St. John's. Um, that's how I was able to figure out that it was St. John's and whatnot. But there's more to that. So Cupid's is, a, is in a part of Newfoundland called Avalon Peninsula. It's where most of the English, Irish, and Scottish settled. Um, and it is indeed like, uh, it's a 400-year-old town because it is the first uh, English settlement mm-hmm. in Newfoundland. Um, and I may be able to actually get some footage and uh, visit Cupid's while I'm on my trip, while this is being posted. So at some point down the road from that, I might actually be posting some video of the actual Cupid's location, um, and maybe even like some of the uh, uh, some some areas around there. There because it's kind of actually where I actually have family. Well, the reason why we're going down there is because I have, uh, there's some family things there. Because uh, my grandparents originally, one of my grandparents is actually from there. Uh, we're just across. We're a couple of, um, apparently we were, we're in an, uh, another bay nearby or another cove nearby called Conception Bay. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, yeah, anyway, um, but yeah, so, um, yeah, I'm going down there on family business and also just like to check out Newfoundland because why not? Um, 
So, yeah, I'm probably going to end up getting some footage of Cupid's if I can. Yeah. Well, um, try to find some blueberry bushes. Yeah. Also, apparently berry picking is, like, again, I went, uh, that, that whole berry picking thing is actually, like, uh, like back in, like, the day, like, even now, like, even today, berry picking is actually an econo- a means of economic sustainability for the people of Newfoundland. Hmm. Like, it's one of the revenues they have, is berry picking. And that's also where, like, the fairy folk, like, stories kind of come from, is that, like, oh, don't stray off the path, um, or uh, whatever, when you're going out berry picking and stuff like that. It's actually, like, it, it, I'll get into it. Like, it's an interesting thing that I've discovered with this stuff. Um, also, here's another quote. Um, I had assumed that they were afraid of robbers and, and roughnecks that might be roaming the less maintained and less populated path. But now I wonder if it was simply to appease my grandfather's fears. Um, this is in regards to like the, the trail that was always avoided. Mm-hmm. What period was this set in? Like I don't know why, but robbers and roughnecks seems like an older term for vagrants and druggies um, to me, and like or like thugs and gang and like and like uh, like just like those kind of people. Like and it it, it just might just be my it, it just had me wondering when exactly these events were transpiring. Um, well, because of the terminology that some of this is used. Well, this sort of lends itself to it being a female protagonist. Yeah. Uh, because of the fact that I know a lot of women don't go for walks at night because darkness and there could be some guy down that alley. Yeah. So it's that sort of mentality, but in a... Or oh, robbers and roughnecks. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a, it's just a, like I don't, maybe it's just because I've never heard that like like that before. But like robbers and roughnecks, it sounds like such an older like a weirder. Well, like, what else do you term. call them when they're in a forest? Vagrants and druggies. Around here, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe again, maybe that's the difference. Like we are in. A, I, I mean, I we live in a relatively rural like area. Like we have urban sprawl, but we also have we live on the outskirts of those urban sprawls. Yeah. So maybe that's it. Like maybe like Cupid's is so rural. Uh, and from what I've seen of it, it's pretty small town. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe that's it. Maybe it's just like that's kind of like the terminology of Newfoundland. Um, but yeah, it just it, it just it threw me off when I when I heard that. Um, <laughs> and then uh, going forward here with another quote. In fact, a rush of excitement went through my. In fact, a, a rush of excitement went through me. As I walked to the same path I was sure he had so long ago. It's difficult to explain, but the sense of stepping into folklore was thrilling and suppressed all worry and perhaps my common sense as I proceeded. So I really love this quote. <laughs> um, because I have a similar... I'd, I'd, I'd have a similar reaction to stumbling upon a location from a horror story or a movie. Or, you know, like walking into a town mentioned in a creepypasta <laughs> that I'm probably going to do when I go to do that. Anyway. Um, and then we can continue on with that. Uh, after passing through a ring of trees that had managed to grow in. So, this is actually, uh, this line here, it doesn't like it. I, was, I thought they should actually have some, like, kind of, should, they'd bring it back like, later, but it, it's a clever little red flag for anyone who's familiar with fairy lore. The ring of, of trees. Also, in my research, there are such things as rings of trees like this in yeah. Newfoundland. Like in yeah. Conception Bay North, yeah. there is a, a, a ring of 13 beech trees mm-hmm. um, that are on barren earth otherwise. And it's a ring, it's a fairy, tr- a fairy ring. Hmm. So I thought that was really cool that, like, that was, I, I was like, oh shit, you're walking into a trap. Uh, but it never really got it. Also, um, at the same time, though, but you're you're a fan of fairy lore and folklore, and you don't pick up on the fact that there's a ring of trees. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, again, at this point, though, they are also uh, supposedly skeptical about what about the, about going into the sky thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we get uh, the uh, confrontation with the, the king of trees. My blood ran cold at the sight that greeted my eyes. Standing there was a tall creature that looked to be made of tree bark that creaked and groaned with every movement. Hey, it's the monster from Christmas Tree, uh, from, the tr- from the Christmas Tree creepypasta. He just hopped over the, uh, the pond <laughs> from Scotland. <laughs> um, and then uh, I just really, I just want to say, I really like the King of Rock, the King of Trees, the King of Bone are just awesome looking based on their descriptions in this. Mm-hmm. Like, these... And I looked online. Like, I tried looking around for the King of Bone, the King of Rock, the King of Trees as fairy creatures in, like, Newfoundland. I think they're original creatures. 
or they've just never been like brought up anywhere else aside from the story. So I really like yeah. the, the the designs of uh, the, the the design of the monsters we get in this. Yeah, but um, they are like both nature spirit. They're basically like nature like nature spirits because yeah. they're all made of. They're composed of the the environment around them. Uh, also, fun fact: I think one of the major like prop like animals that you're going to ever run into in, in, in Newfoundland are not like predators, but moose. Hmm. <laughs> so. I mean, still kill you, but yeah. not a predator. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's still a moose, and it's basically going to yeah, like it's 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 not a predator, but it's still a monster. Basically, it's still a, like a creature that you you should be feared and and respected. Um, yeah, and like the only reason this character uh, also, I'm reminded um, with regards to like the whole like uh, the chase and stuff like that. Uh, and thing, the fact that they are not killing they're not killing them like right off the get go it reminded me of the wild hunt which is a fairy thing of like basically a never ending like chase uh, that fairy folk do to uh, poor uh, would be like uh, walkers or hikers hmm. um, yeah so it's just like and yeah like basically the only reason this character is not just disappeared from the, re- from the face of the planet is because they were playing with them mm-hmm. and I just love that like menace that mm-hmm. they really cat like uh, for me the story really captures its monster as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and f- okay, this one's this is actually a run-on sentence um, that I caught. Okay, but it's easily fixed uh, if it ever does. It held a vaguely humanoid form, although faceless and looked to be composed of moss and soil. Though it reeked of death and insects burrowed through it. It basically up till about. Um, you could have had the entire thing except for, like, after it was composed of uh, moss and soil, then break, like, mm-hmm. period, and then though it reeked of death, and, uh, or it's like, though it reeked of death, and, or like, it reeked, or maybe just get rid of though, and just have it reeked of death, and yeah. insects burrowed through it. Like, you don't, it, it, it was kind of a long, yeah. constant comment, and stuff like that. Here's another quote Gasping for breath. Okay, yeah, this one's a clunky sentence as well. Gasping for breath from the strike, the fall, and the pain I was becoming increasingly aware of, I thought of my grandfather's descriptions, devils. I don't, like, I read that a couple of times when I first read it, and it still doesn't really quite work well with me. Like, yeah. there's so many commas, there's, there's a handful of commas, and it's just like, gasping for breath from the strike, the fall, and the pain I was becoming increasingly aware of. And then we get a comma, and then I thought of my grandfather's description. What is he? What is, what is that oh, trying to say? It's like, trying to say like while all these things are happening. Yeah, I'm my mind is going back to the devils. Yeah, like these are or the devils. Devils get away from them. Yeah, no, I get that. <laughs> like it's just it, it's it's kind of clunky though, right? Like I'm not yeah. insane here. <laughs> yeah, there, um, there's a few clunky parts in this. So yeah, um, understandable. No, oh, and here's a here's another uh, quote. My fear left me, as did my senses, as I slipped from this from his grip. As I slipped from his grip and fell the remaining distance out of the trail, I thought I heard laughter that was soon replaced by the voices of men. I really like this faint. It's it's a fainting interlude, um, like transition piece, mm-hmm. like transition sentence or transition uh, bit that does actually hint at how the person got rescued. Yeah, and I really appreciate that because we don't like. People just fainting and yeah. then appearing somewhere else. We never get that, like how they yeah. how they get from point A to point B, unless it's actually explained. And sometimes it's not even explained, yeah. uh, like post mortem. But this mm-hmm. one, we actually get a hint at like he, they heard just as they were slipping into unconsciousness, they were hearing the laughter of the fake creatures as they walked away, and some people like passing by came by and the, like they heard that the, their voices. Mm-hmm. And then it's also explained that some people passing by saw them fall out of the trail. Yeah, I really I, like I liked that. It, it, it's a, it was a nicely written well piece of like of interlude or of like mm-hmm. um, transition. So, um, and this is a basically a paragraph I'm going to be reading now. Mm-hmm. Um, my grandfather suggested that my grandmother should do the same, and after a quizzical look, she too left, leaving us alone. I attempted to shift in my bed to look at my grandfather, but was held in place by a sudden awareness of terrible pain. I glanced down at the cast on my arm. And then back up to my grandfather, who moved to my side so that he could speak quietly to me. They can't seem to keep the wounds cleaned, he said after a moment of silence. They keep finding bone fragments and splinters and dirt. 
he broke off, and then then continued mourning. Then continued mournfully. You went looking for the fairies, didn't you? Without even an offering to protect yourself. His face was pale as he squeezed my good hand. I should have never told you my story. I'm sorry I did. I'm sorry I couldn't make you believe in an old man. Before I could say a word, he left me to my guilt-ridden rest. This paragraph is just a really good paragraph of storytelling to me. Like, reading it, I could feel the guilt of disobeying a family member and then mm-hmm. having the consequences weighed down on you with their words of disappointment. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, I just really... Like, this story has a lot of really good, well-written pieces in it. Mm-hmm. Um... Like for that kind of thing, like it actually. This is what I really like. As I was reading it, I was like feeling the cringeness of like being that person. Like you, yeah, you totally disobeyed your grandparents. Like you told you not to do something, and you did it, and you almost got killed for it. Hmm. And then what's worse is now you're being, you're seeing their disapproval. Yeah, yeah, really appreciated that. Um, and then here's another paragraph. They kept me in the hospital until the wounds on my side and my hip healed completely. Out of fear of infection due to the never-ending supply of items that needed to be pulled from them, as well as the putrid stench, I remember waking from the restless sleep one night, only to find a centipede working its way out of my hip. I screamed until the nurses came, who pulled the thrashing insect from me. And after inspecting the wound for more, they cleaned it again. Well, they cleaned it again, and left it with looks of fear and disgust, barely hidden under the bedside manner. I'm pretty sure someone should be investigating this kind of medical issue, <laughs> unless, of course, the hospital is unofficially aware of the supernatural neighbors they have, mm-hmm. and they just kind of keep it under wraps. Yeah. Which, again, <laughs> based on what I've done research-wise. It's not in the realms of impossibility for this for Avalon Peninsula to basically just have the people like yeah. like oh yeah, we, they, like they know things and yeah. they, they keep shit like it's like there's no need to get the government involved. We, it's just something that the fairy the, the fair folk do <laughs> like have they like it's yeah, yeah. yeah I really liked that like I, I like to think that in my head canon there's like a secret like society or secret or like order of uh, of like neighbors um, in this area like even at the at the hospitals in St John's they just kind of keep things under wraps. Mm-hmm. Actually, it's not in St. John's. Uh, this hospital is somewhere in another town, um, I think. But why? It's 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 in a nearby town. It's not in St. John's, though. I don't think it's it's. I think I mean I should look it up. Just they're, sure. they're not that far from St. John's. They're an hour. They're an hour out. So I mean that's still like I don't know. Like if, if there's a closer hospital, then they might as well go that's there, right? True. But I don't think. Yeah, I think I remember it not being called. It's not Cupid's, and I don't think it was. Ho- uh, I don't think it was St. John's, though. Hmm. Luckily, I still have it up. So oh god, except I have to scroll. <laughs> Scroll all the way down to the bottom. Oh, there it is. Yeah, they're in. Um, and I, actually, no, I don't even know if this is a town, but Carbonier, Carbonier General Hospital. Oh. Um, actually, I'm gonna quickly Google Carbonier. Carbonier Hospital. Where is Carbonier? Carbonier Collegiate too. So, Carbonier, a town in Newfoundland and Labrador. It is just north of Bristol's Hope, which, if I you know zoom in a bit. To Google Maps, find out exactly. I think I want to say it's it's either north of uh, of based on like the little like the screenshot I have of like where the where the water is compared to where the land is. I want to say it's probably north of Cupid's, okay, away from St. John. Okay, so that's um, right God damn, the oh, town closest called, one. Yeah, you know, a town called Freshwater. It's a little <laughs> on the nose. <laughs> Bryant's Cove, man. That's another thing. There are coves for days uh, <laughs> along the coast of. Uh, Along the coast of, uh, yeah, uh, Cupid's Bay. Yeah, Cupid's right. Bay. It's just north of Cupid's. It's, it's north of Cupid's Bay. Okay. Er, so. Sorry, it's north of Cupid's. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's north of Cupid's. Um, yeah, so it's not even like St. John's at that point. But, yeah, again, like, these, like, and I know a couple of weeks ago we just did, like, we were talking about 502, about it being, um, like, really ingrained in, um, like real world stuff, mm-hmm. but that's a sl- that's a vlog where you can actually mm-hmm. see things. Is a little bit, I'd, I'd do a lot more research, or like a lot more googling mm-hmm. to find this stuff. Yeah. Um, also, we'll kind of you can still like zero in on a lot of locations. Yeah. Just not where the blueberry patch is. Yeah. Because that's where the trail is. Well, that's where the madness is. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, but yeah, so that's my thing about the whole hospital, like, in the, the, the area around Cupid's and Conception Bay and, like, Avalon Peninsula. It's just, like, there's, like, the secret order of, like, people, like, old, of old-timers and generationals who are just, like, keeping this kind of stuff under wraps because it's just, it's an everyday life thing that they've yeah, been dealing with since they came to the uh, New World. Um, that's my head canon. I, want, I would like to, if anybody would like to expand on that or, like, has expanded on that kind of stuff, let me know. I would like to read that. <laughs> anyway, um... And this is so yeah. So they're in the hospital. They're getting out of the hospital, and then in the years that passed since the incident, I completed my bachelor's degree, and I'm currently working on my master's while writing a book about fairy lore of the province, including my own incidents. So here is where I get basically the bulk of my last notes. First off, Jesus, wait a time skip. <laughs> and that was, and that's also kind of the problem with the story. There are some really good story bits and descriptions, and, and like when it's when we are when, when we are confronted by things or when things are happening, they are described well. They are they're you can re- they're they're written very well. Mm-hmm. Um, but the story could be fleshed out a lot more mm-hmm. or a bit more. Um, the middle portion, in particular, came and went very quickly. Like. They, they got the interview from the grandfather. The next morning, they decided to go out anyways and find the trail. Yep. They get to the trail. They pass, some, they pass the tree, ring of trees. I feel like that ring of trees was mentioned and should have been mentioned again. Yeah. Or, like, should have been, like, hinted at. Like, like should have been noted. Yeah. Because otherwise, like, I mean, I'm just, like, I know fairy, fo- like, folklore to a degree. And ring of trees, uh, or, like, ring of anything, basically, in fairy yeah. folklore is, is a trap. Yeah. <laughs> or at least, if you're not careful, it's a trap. Mm-hmm. Um... So, I feel like that could have been done more. The whole, like, chase, like, there could have been so much more. We yeah. have these cool descriptions of these monsters, and all they do, like, and, and like, we still, like, the descriptions that are, we are given about them, like, whipping her and, like, attacking her and stuff like that, on, like, play, they could have been so much more gameplay. Mm-hmm. Like, so, so much more, like, tormenting. Yeah. Um, for that whole scene. Like, it could have, like, it was just, it, and then suddenly it just ended, and then she woke up in the hospital, and, like, it, 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 it suffers from a common issue we have with, with group pasta stories, is that it just kind of skims through, like, glosses over, like, the, uh, uh, certain parts that really should have been fleshed out a little bit better. Yeah. Um, and for this story, it just made me sad because it's just, this, it, 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 could just it, was, it was so well, it was so nicely written in, in, the, in the spots that were good, or the spots that were, that we are given. Um, like, I enjoyed this read. So, also, some quick Googling did bring up a woman named Barbara Rietti. This is an mm-hmm. excerpt from the Canadian Living article I found on her mm-hmm. and fairy folklore in Newfoundland. Mm-hmm. That most of Newfoundland's fairies are described as, troubles- uh, trouble- as troublemakers is somewhat surprising. The majority of fairies are not good fairies, says Barbara Rietti, who did a PhD thesis in folklore on the, se- on the subject of fairies at Memorial University in- of Newfoundland in St. John's, Newfoundland. <laughs> yeah. um, and later authored a book, Strange Terrain, The Fairy World of in Newfoundland, ISER Books, Memorial University, 1991. They play tricks and lead you off over and lead you over the edge or a cliff. They'll change people, or you'll get a fairy blast when they hit you. And then nasty stuff comes out of the wounds, like sticks, balls of wool, and fish bones. So given the, this discovery. I think that Knitwolf probably based the story on their own reading or research of this material. Yeah. Uh, interesting to me, uh, I also did look it up a little bit. The Canadian Living article came out in two, May, 2000, or May 28, 2015. And the Creepypasta was posted on Creepypasta.com sometime in October of 2015. Um, that and the fact that the, uh, Rietti's book, Strange Terrain, has been published since 1991... Yeah. Um, also, a possibility, it seems like Cupid's is actually a hotbed for fairy folklore. And so it's not really hard for me to think that this information is also just really easily accessible to people. Uh, from what I did research, um, like they have a whole heritage museum devoted mm-hmm. to like the heritage of Newfoundland, but also to fairy folklore and stories and stuff like that. So it, it wouldn't surprise me that uh, somebody in the area, which I believe Nitwolf is actually from Newf- Newfoundland, um, that they would actually uh, be able to access the stuff if they had an interest in it. Yeah. So I don't want to say, like, I, and I haven't read the book. And actually, by, again, during this week that I'm not actually here, but you're, you're hearing this, I will probably be hunting down a copy of Strange Terrain, as well as Rietti's other book, which is about witchcraft in uh, Newfoundland. Hmm. Um, 
And so, yeah, regarding that, um, like, I don't, I, I can't say here or, here or there um, how much of this is pulled directly from a book or if this is actually just common knowledge in the area uh, or in the, in the, in, on the province and stuff of that. Like, again, like, if it's been around since 1991, it would have probably, it, it, there's a very good possibility that anybody interested in, it would have an effect on anybody who's in, interested in that, uh, in that, in the, what's the word, uh, in that topic yeah. in the area, even, so... Um, like location wise, like sh- they're in the right area. Um, they're seeking this kind of information out, so it's all there. Yeah, um, I don't, I'm, and I'm not sure if in the book uh, Rietti had an incident like this. So I, I can only uh, like I've, right now I'm willing to go that the character, the, the the author Nit Wolf came up with the story based on information she got from the store from from stories that she heard in the area or from wow. this book or whatever and then they made their own story based off of that and maybe yeah. who knows maybe the character in this story it kind of seems like they are supposed to be Rietti yeah because of just like how close her her um, uh, occupation or her uh, her history compared to the history of the um, the character also uh, she's um, um yeah, the book was published in 1991, so I could believe uh, like the time setting kind of fits a little bit more to like an older period, because it did kind of feel like it was a little bit more antiquated, like not like the 30s, but like 70s or 80s, like some like an old, slightly older than the modern period. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, also regarding Kit, uh, re- I want to say Kit Wolf. Regarding Knit Wolf, I did some more digging on that, and to get information regarding this story, and kind of stumbled upon a blog she is or was a part of, and I think it's a Slender Man ARG. Uh, we're probably going to end up doing it on the show uh, in a later episode um, as I dig deeper down that rabbit hole. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and also, fun fact, another thing that kind of brought me to the, the, the fact that like all this is common knowledge and some of that, every fact of information about like fairy floor and like, oh, like all the stories and like the town and the location and some of that... It's all actual in real life for the most part. Like four hundred years, like Cupid's is an actual town from four uh, that's yeah. been around four hundred years. Um, almost all of the fairy lore was in that Canadian's Living's article. Yeah, which I did. You read it? Yeah. Okay. Good. And pretty much all of it. Yeah, is in there. So the only thing that isn't in there is is uh, I could the only thing I could not find that I think is probably original for the story is the monsters. Um, is the monsters, and I yeah. fucking love that because the monsters yeah. are the coolest thing in the or, I mean I don't know. Yeah. It's really cool that like we have this like setting and background of the fairy folk in Newfoundland. But then you added in, like, these these kings, and, like, I'm so down for hearing more about the kings of bone, the king of rot, and the king of trees. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because, like, well, just th- that article, like, if Nit Wolf found that article, that it would have be very well been the inspiration Yeah, it's not too hard of, it really isn't too hard of a uh, uh, thing, because it's only been, a, it was only a couple of months between, like, it coming out and... Um, that and it seems like she is a, a an avid internet person, like a blogger yeah. and stuff like that. So she probably found it on Canadian Living. Yeah. Um, also, it could just be information that's like it seemed like it was all information from that Canadian Living was stuff that's common knowledge in that area. Yeah. Like in Cuba, like so, like from. <laughs> okay, actually, one thing about the Canadian Living thing, just like slight aside. Did you did you read the uh, the, the the guy who's uh, the intangible? <laughs> uh, do you have it on on your? Do you have the Kay Lemon uh, article there? Or? I think so. If you can look it up, there's like the intangible director of the Department of Heritage. Uh, where was it? Let me see. It. Well, there you have it. I think I have it. It's like under, uh, I think it's, his name is Dale. Uh, it's the first time we, we hear Dale uh, Jarvis. Oh. Dale Jarvis's name. Um, yeah, Intangible Cultural Heritage Development Officer. Yeah. Like, wait, he's intangible? <laughs> like, that no, was... <laughs> it, it's talking about the cultural heritage, so the cultural heritage is intangible. Okay. <laughs> the way I read that, though, like, it kind of yeah. said, like, he's the intangible, he's the immortal <laughs> heritage man. He's the, he's the lord of the, ma- of the heritage. Anyway, yeah, so, sorry, that was just a quick aside from, just for that article. Um, I'll leave a link in the description for the article, because yeah. that's yeah. definitely worth checking out. Um, um and it's easy to see in the article, like where the where a bunch the, of the so fairy points, yeah, like and even like the the, the woman right. Michelle Barbara, like her story, like this, like a lot of the information about like the character, the narrator is ba- is kind of is kind of Barbara. Yeah. Um. So. Exactly. And yeah, I have some examples here. Like, uh, there's a quote that 
in a sense, fairies are nature personified. Yeah. So that Which showed the language creatures, to yeah. the creatures, and then, uh, so and then there's berry picking, yeah. which is very common in as an economic thing. In, yeah. Well, yeah, that's where... not as economic, just at, in fairy tales, because some oh, yeah, yeah, picking berries will hear fairy music. They come entranced and lose their way in the woods. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, I, I did actually look it up. Like, um, I think I did look it up for separately. Uh, it did say that, like, some, somewhere else said that, like, berry picking in Newfoundland is a, um, at the very least, an economic uh, hobby or pastime that some people do. Like, rather than fishing or whatever, they go, they go and like uh, collect berries and some like of that. Um, and like, not like, I guess, not like, in, like industrial or anything like that, or not, like not like as a like a way of income, but like just as something to do, I guess, hmm. or it's part of the culture. And so they include, like, yeah, that's included as well. So, like, again, it adds on to the, like, the characters, like, backstory and stuff. Yeah. And then uh, under the section here in the article for Charms for Protection, yeah, they named it says, all, all of keeping them. bread in your pockets can ward off the fairies, so you don't have to give it It's an, an offering. offering. Oh, you can use it as an offering, I think, can't you? Well, it's just it might... a, well... I don't in think this that, article. Yeah, yeah. And another thing, like, like the article's doing it in broad strokes about, like, but, like getting, like, the key stuff out, but there might be, like, um, it, it does also say that there are different, there are varied versions of uh, yeah, what I'll, I'll do. Yeah, i get to that Sorry. in a second. All right, you're right. right. Talk, damn it. Why? <laughs> and then it says, uh, or if you're in danger of being led astray, you can turn an article of clothing inside out. Uh, putting it back on the right path. So it didn't need to be a coat, but that was what the grandfather had said. The grandfather had said. So again, it might be a regional dialect yeah. kind of, or a regional story, or like a person-to-person story kind of thing. And here's the the part that screws up everything, Uh-oh. which is the tricky part is that for every story you hear and every rule about the fairies, there's another story that says the opposite. Well, that's that's actually. So. I mean, yeah. But I mean, <laughs> so I, I understand what that say, what that saying though. That's basically yeah. like. It's kind of like with ghosts, or like like some yeah. people say that rock salt works against them. Some people say that electricity works against them. But like, who's to say what works and what doesn't? Because it's a supernatural. Who knows? Yeah. Um, it's dependent, and uh, like it seemed like for this story, the kings of the kings of the the kings of nature, <laughs> or the kings of Newfoundland, <laughs> um, are uh, are easily or can be appeased by like offerings of breadcrumbs and uh, you know yeah. be confused by putting your coat with them, um, yeah. or turning your coat inside out. Um, yeah. But yeah, so that's yeah, like that's, that's I found it really fascinating. Like I, I, I want I started reading more into it. Like that's why, not even just for the story's sake, but like for my own sake, I want to get that book, Strange Terrain, just to know about it. Because yeah. like I have some family from uh, Newfoundland, and like it would be cool to know that that's and actually, I'm fr- apparently from or like those those members of my family like uh, or like my ancestors were in uh, Avalon Peninsula, so mm-hmm. it's. Yeah, that'd be a part of my heritage. That's kind of cool. <laughs> but yeah, so um, where's I going with this? Yeah, so that's basically my notes on that. Um, so I guess sir, you can continue, Mikey. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, and the interesting part about Cupid's Legacy Center is that it includes an archaeological field lab and fairy garden. Yeah. So they have a laboratory. And a you son of a bitch! Science, Science magic, together. <laughs> and in a horror aspect, too. <laughs> and, uh, sorry, 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 so, would you say that it's magic? Science, or sorry, science, magic together with a slight bit of mod- uh, uh, a slight bit of, of of horror for moderation. <laughs> Can you get behind that? Kind of. <laughs> Oh, uh, man. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> Alright, continue on. Alright, so... If this story were to have a moral, I would say it's don't take shortcuts. Yeah. It can be avoided. Yeah. But cause, eh, because at the beginning, uh, the story of the grandfathers, they took a shortcut home. Yeah. And then, obviously... The protagonist isn't taking a shortcut; they're just wandering. Yeah, but which sort of defeats the. I kind of, but um, 
like be respectful or like <laughs> respect your elders <laughs> and, yeah. and, and don't take shortcuts. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. those are the morals we can take from this. Yeah, yeah. And that's really like that, that's all creep. Like apparently that's all fairy stories are. Like and they're all like kind of cautionary tales. They're like yeah. things to like teach kids not to do certain things and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. According to yeah, like that's basically what they kind of came out of, or that's one possibility of where they came out of. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. The it wasn't until I started doing the research and finding that one article, which you find it's, it's just by Googling, Googling searching fairies in Newfoundland. Well, or, uh, I just did Newfoundland folklore. Very first really? link. So it's not even just yeah. Well, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Very first link. And I was like, wow. And you look at that and you see, like, okay, so they took a bunch of fairy lore and put it into a story, which makes sense. And then they added the monsters. Yeah, which adds on to it. We love the monsters, but there wasn't enough. Yeah, that's that's the problem, is that... They, it, like, they, they when, when they, when, when it was, when the person, when the person, like, when, what we did have, yeah, gripped you a little, uh, gripped you to a degree, like, yeah. but we love the monsters, when, what we got was really interesting and kept us enthralled, but we want more, because, yeah. and there actually should be, in this case, there should be more, yeah, it's not just like, like, we just have to, have, like, we have that, like, oh, like that yeah. hunger for more, but no, this one actually does need a little bit more because otherwise there there are spots between those good pieces that are just glossed over and that's the problem with them is that they're glossed over not that they're badly yeah. written and when you spend so much time explaining the setting especially since you've created like you've effect like assuming that uh, assuming that Knit Wolf has actually come up with like three new like fairy monsters to torment um, like story characters and stuff of that they've just expanded on the fairy stories Mm-hmm. Like they're 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 following like with the traditions of oral history and like added in some new some new uh, characters. Mm-hmm. Um, like she, the, they're expanding on it, and I really like that. And I would love to hear more about like people getting screwed over by the by the kings of <laughs> trees, and, by the kings of trees, rotten and bone, mm-hmm. or like being or like actually stumbling upon their domain. Like that would be fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. But we need more. <laughs> yeah. And then the the only. Uh, quote that I have that uh, sort of annoyed me, but it's just because of um, how the words are placed. Yeah. Uh, so it's when the character's going out the next morning. Uh, it has, the next morning I attempted to slip out explaining when my mother caught me at the door that I wanted to take a stroll through the hometown oh, before wow. I got to Holy the back. <laughs> and before I had to go back to the city. But it's a long one, but you have commas, and there, there should be another comma in there somewhere to break up the, the later section, because of the whole explaining being it sort of separated by commas. Yeah. And at that point in the sentence... You're like explaining. Why are you explaining? And then, and then it goes into when my mother caught me. It's like oh, okay, and then it's just not that great of a. Well, it it explains something before it needs explaining. Yeah. <laughs> so that was my beef. That really, the only thing that really stood out when I was reading for uh, issue wise. But then you got a bunch, so that's yeah. good too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much. And yeah, well, there's just another thing from the the article. Yeah. That that also ties in. The, many of the stories recount fairy sightings, strange happenings, or talk of fairy paths and fairy ground. Yeah. So and that one of the fairy grounds being circles, uh, like yeah. fairy rings, um, and then you have the paths. I th- like yeah. Yeah, that was really interesting. Yeah, like the whole, like yeah, uh-huh. the, yeah, like the fairy path, like a fairy, like a trail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that the, is groomed. The, the, the trail that you're going on, that's groomed by the fairies, but you have to get past the non-groomed section first. Well, because I mean, what I think is like the, the overgrown part makes it like seem like a barrier or a wall, right? Yeah. And then the you know the, they want to keep the rest of their domain clean. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
yeah, like, I just, yeah, I want to know more about these kings. <laughs> um, like, why are they the kings? Like, are they, were they here before, or were, are they, were they brought in, or they, did they come with the, uh, um, with the, uh, the English and the Scottish and the Irish? Um, also, I, I didn't read a lot of the comments. There's, no, there's a whole lot of comments. There's no comments on the Wiki Beach, but there was a couple of comments on the creepboss.com website. Okay. And uh, somebody brought up that these aren't really fairy creatures so much as described as um, Fulmar, which are technically fair. They're they're fairy they're fairy like like they are like kind tangentially related to the fairies, uh, but they were exiled by the fairies into the ocean. Oh, and they are giant. They are basically primordial, like nature spirits. So it's the fairy of like fairy kind, and they like hate. They're malevolent forces. Um, they're actually done a lot. They're used uh, in a couple of urban fantasy series, like Dresden Falls. He, uh, touches on them eventually um, as a as a nemesis force. Um, hmm. And uh, but yeah, like they're basically like so they're like oh these aren't really fairies that you bring up. They're more like the Fulmore or the Fulm or the Fulmore and so that. But like really at the same time like the. In in like it's it's uh, it's a different it's a again, it's a regional dialect kind of thing. Like yeah. the, the fairy folk are in Newfoundland are slight, are different than the ones in in England and and uh, the British Isles because yeah. they, it is a different. It is literally across a massive gulf of ocean. Yeah. Um. Like and like these two groups like they split off and they tell their stories. They tell their stories in a different way, and like the it mutates. Yeah. So, like, yeah, like the fairies of Newfoundland are going to be slightly different than the fairies of the old world, unless they were exiled from the old. And world. are full more, and these are actually full more, which well, would be cool. They are full more, but they're fairies because they're they're fairies that did, they're fairies that didn't end up as full more. <laughs> yeah. Um, although I think I like to think that they are like I, I, I don't know like Fulmar are, are interesting uh, like it's a whole awesome we could do a whole fucking episode on fairy cre- of fairy folklore I could bring in like our other um, our, one of our buddies who like is huge into Celtic lore um, mm-hmm. for that but we'll do that and, and you know what if anybody who's listening to this wants us to do that leave us an email or a comment uh, let us know if we should actually do that or maybe make it a Patreon thing or something like that mm-hmm. um, but yeah like that's. Uh, is it, uh, yeah, that's basically like my thing about. It. So, anything else to go with that? Uh, no, no, that's pretty much it. The it, it's nice that they did they did re- research. Wow, well, or, or they read an article, <laughs> or they read an article, <laughs> or like it's just it's again like easily accessible because they are in the area, and so that's yeah. kind of like I don't know, like I, I actually I try to think uh, like for us in Ontario, mm-hmm. we have ghosts. I think is our main staple of like lore, folklore. Hmm. Hauntings, like, are yeah. kind of our main staple. So it's interesting, like, because I'm, I'm really, well, we don't really have fairies like folklore. We have, we have Wilno that has vampires, apparently, or that had <laughs> vampires. Hmm. Um, yeah, the town of Wilno up in northern Ontario had uh, had an epidemic that scared the shit out of me. I thought I saw somebody walk down the, like, walk past the window. <laughs> um, Surprise! <laughs> Slender Man! <laughs> oh God! <laughs> or Full Bar, the King of the King of Windows, <laughs> <laughs> or the King of Rock showed up. Oh God! Or the King of Hounds. <laughs> anyway, um, actually, that would be a good one. My to, no, it was. Um, sorry. Uh, back to what I was saying. Um, yeah, like this. Like it, it made me. Th- the story. I guess we're going into recommendations. The story yeah. made me think about our own folklore, like local folklore, and the fact that we don't really have. We have. We tend to. Uh, in this part of the in this province, we tend to focus more on ghosts mm-hmm. um, than anything else because that's kind of the tangent. Like, there's we're kind of this province in particular is pretty well a melting pot of different like cultures, whereas Newfoundland seem to be primarily English, Irish, and Scottish. So weird English, Irish, and Scottish folklore melted or kind of came over mm-hmm. um, and kind of took over. Um, so yeah, like it made me think on that. It made me really interested in. <laughs> Maybe you're really interested in the um, the the stories of New like of Newfoundland. I'm like I'm really excited to go to to this this place uh, this, you know, to Cupids and Avalon Peninsula and see what it's all like. See like how like see like see, visit this this location from a creepypasta <laughs> um, and uh, like take some photos and videos and stuff like that and possibly get attacked by someone. <laughs> 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 hoping. Uh, anyway, um, so yeah, recommendation-wise, um, it, it's got some flaws. Like the writing's the writing's good when it's good, and it's glossed over and like kind of mediocre when it's, when it's trying to like get to the back to the good parts. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, I would recommend it. Um, 
It was a it was an enjoyable read. Um, it, we we get some really cool new monsters, um, and yeah, like it, it, it takes some of the tropes of, of horror stories, like again the fainting thing, and makes it better. Like mm-hmm. we he they hear like I said they hear the person they hear people the people that are coming that see them like as they're passing by and like before they pass out. Mm-hmm. Like we don't get like something like a jarring like oh I woke up in the hospital. Um, we they woke up. They woke up after hearing somebody like coming to them, and then it's explained that they, they saw somebody pass it. So we actually had like some like fucking connection, <laughs> like it wasn't as jarring. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, good story. We would recommend. Um, I would. I am going to be jumping down that rabbit hole again probably as I read through the over a hundred blog entries and comments. Apparently, are also part of the ARG. So there's also the all the comments to those blog entries. For um, uh, a path of a path, of, it's called a path of needles or a path of pins, hmm. or a path of pins or a path of needles. Um, uh, and uh, also, Nitwolf, um, yeah, like when I was looking up like stuff, more stuff about it, about her and uh, like what she does. Um, this seems to be the only three plus I've seen that she's actually written. Um, again, anybody who knows otherwise, please let us know. Um, but otherwise, aside from uh, from this one creepy pasta and that slender vlog or slender blog. Um, she also does, uh, she knits uh, plushies, mm-hmm. like wool plushies, yeah. which I'm surprised she hasn't done any wool plushies of the kings. I would love to commission a wool plushie of, like, the king of rot or the king of uh, the king of trees. King of bone would be kind of hard. Yeah. But the king of rot or the king of, of trees would be, a, would be a, a probably just as easily done, or just as well, like, just as easily done as, or, like, just as... Manageable as uh, doing a Slenderman plushie mm-hmm. or a rake plushie or whatever the other ones she's done. Because, like, if you go to, uh, um, uh, I'll leave a description for her shop or her, like, her uh, online, like, store and uh, stuff, just where you can get her uh, in the description. Um, yeah, she, they, they're really well done. Mm-hmm. All right, I feel like I'm just kind of floundering here. So, yeah, bottom line, would recommend The Fair Folk uh, for reading uh, or even listen to. So, that's mine. Mikey, you said for you. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna recommend this one. Uh, it is hard because there's so much that is taken from the fairy yeah. stuff. Yeah. And but there's just that little bit that is the original. Yeah, but I mean, I know that is like... well, and it, it has its own twist on some of them. Yeah. Like the coat. Like, spe- yeah, like specifying the coat from the grandfather, and it's like, oh, I didn't bring a coat, and that works because they're all different. Yeah, right? they're, yeah, they mentioned that there's basically depending on any person you talk to about it, they always have a different story. Yeah. Um, so it's like phone tag. <laughs> it's if anything, if you read this, it might spark you to learn more about yeah, fairies. It, what I see, it, yeah, that's actually one of the things I like about it is that it's an introductory to the the setting, which is the lore, the fairy folklore of New, of Newfoundland. Mm-hmm. Or Newfoundland, um, well, and then we also, and then there's the additions of the kings. Yeah. So, well, and it might even spark some listeners to investigate their own folklore and whatever yeah. they are. So, yeah, because again, like, like yeah, because like I said, like the like I've thought back on uh, like what we have here in Ontario, and it's it's really just like our major one export of folklore is ghosts and hauntings, uh, and so yeah. 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 So, like, and and that, that's again, like, I just it, this story is a good spark. Yeah. That's what it seems like. Sorry, again, took over your <laughs> recommendations. <laughs> so, recommendations is that you would recommend it. Yeah. All right. Well, this has been this week's episode of Aldente Rigor Mortis. If you like what you heard, if you didn't, leave us a comment in the comment section below where this gets posted. Let us know uh, if you have anything that countermines or um, could help us out with like our. Uh, uh, talk or discussion of this um hopefully in, a, in, the, in the weeks to follow i will have video footage of cupids uh and the region of newfoundland this story is actually takes place uh and until then um you can check us out at qb6 facebook youtube tumblr uh we're both on twitter um mikey was at is at the east Ends for evil i am at review cultist uh again look for possible twitter posts of me in or of uh locations i'm at in newfoundland I might actually start. Po- I might post some things depending if they're relevant to the show or not. Um, and you can uh, leave us a co- uh, leave us a rating and review on iTunes. Let us know how we're doing. Every little bit helps. 
You can also send us emails at aldente rigamortis at gmail.com. That's A L D E N T E R I G A M O R T I S at gmail.com. Where you can leave us suggestions for other creepypastas you'd like to discuss on the show. Hey, if you'd like us to do a creepypasta from a region that you're from, let, let us know and we will take a look at it. Also, you can check out the title cards for each episode at crazonstudios.tumblr.com or the YouTube channel where we do a video version of the episodes. And if you feel so inclined, you can support us by going to Patreon, look up Al Dente Rigor Mortis, where you can choose the backer tier uh, you'd like to support us at. We supply special patron episodes, um, behind-the-scenes stuff, um, early access to the show. So, yeah, just if you feel so inclined. Until next time, I have been your host, Review Cultist. And I'm Mikey, the E stands for evil. And this has been Al Dente Rigor Mortis. Sleep well. Pasta where a tech guy can't connect to the internet. No, no, there was time now. But it was. Um, problem is I can't connect to the internet because you, your wireless is horrible. Yeah. Editing, editing, this is the editing song. Editing, editing, this is the editing song. At some point I got to like do a song for editing. 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 Song for editing.